Well, it's a dingy, damp afternoon in Western New York on this Tuesday, but we're going to be brightening up and warming up with uh, basically good news in the forecast and extended outlook. I'm meteorologist Don Paul. Welcome to my podcast, Don Paul's Bits of Blather on weather, climate, and occasionally some humor. Uh, The good news about the dampness today on Tuesday is rainfall amounts in general will be insufficient to bring new muddy paws into your households. Uh, There are soggy areas that are not going to be helped by today's modest spotty rainfall, but it doesn't look like widespread heavy rain is likely. And as we get into Wednesday, behind a so-called cold front, it will actually be warmer. And that's the pattern I wrote about in my Buffalo News article, cold fronts pass by, but no cold air around here. Uh, Tomorrow, from today's upper 50s and low 60s, we'll go back to 70 or the low 70s in the afternoon with slow partial clearing. Low clouds may be stubborn in the morning, some sun back in the afternoon, good deal of sun on Thursday. Again, temperatures getting into the 70s. And on Friday, ahead of an area of low pressure, we could well see temperatures reaching the low 80s inland from the lake shores. That would be for the first time this season. And uh, that will also help dry the soil. It would help more if we had a good stiff breeze to speed up the evaporation. But then Friday night, that area of low pressure with its warm front will begin to bring in some scattered and occasional showers, maybe a couple of thunder showers, into Saturday morning. And another cold front goes by. And behind that cold front, we go from Friday's potential low 80s to Saturday afternoon's 70. Can't exactly call that cool. It's about 10 degrees warmer than average. And then on Sunday, still a little bit of instability, could be a couple of showers, but it will be partly sunny and still pretty warm in the low 70s. And most of Sunday will be drier than Saturday and looking like a pretty decent Saturday afternoon and Sunday portion of the weekend. And we're still going to be in the low 70s early next week with no indications right now before, say, the 9th or the 10th at the earliest, of any significant cooling around here. There's no pathway for Canadian or Arctic air to get back into the Great Lakes. The upper level flow simply doesn't follow that uh, direction. And there are some indications as we head toward the middle of the month, there are fuzzy hints in what we call the ensembles, the multiple runs of the models. There might be some modest cooling, but when you go that far out in time, even those ensembles are of low reliability. So for now, it appears we're going to be running with above average temperatures most days through at least the first full week of May next week, and maybe beyond that before there are any significant changes. Now, I'm not much on seasonal outlooks. If you follow me, you know I've never really enjoyed having to do them when I was on TV, but I will at least tell you this much. The seasonal outlook currently from the Climate Prediction Center, which is a branch of the National Weather Service for May, June, and July has pretty good confidence mean temperatures in our part of the country will be running above average. You may say, well, summers are supposed to be warm. No, that means warm, but warmer than average for this time of the year. Now, that may not work out, but I don't see any reason to make a big counter argument to that just don't see many ingredients in the atmosphere or in the oceans which would favor a reversion to cooler than average temperatures. And in fact, it has been a very mild spring and a very mild winter. And if you doubt that, Lake Erie at Buffalo didn't get to 49 degrees all by itself. That, by the way, is an astounding 10 degrees above average for April 30th. And uh, with Lake Erie starting out so warm, localized cooling from Lake Erie with the most common wind direction that prevails in the metro area and in much of western New York being from the southwest and crossing the axis of Lake Erie, there may be less cooling afforded us by Lake Erie this late spring and into the early summer than we typically get. No, I'm not saying, oh, we're finally going to hit 100. The only way Buffalo is ever going to hit 100, this will be even after I'm gone, would be with a southerly or southeasterly wind that does not cross Lake Erie. The marine influence of the Great Lakes stopped that 100-degree threshold. Not just here, but believe it or not, and you can look this up, Miami has never hit 100, not officially, and neither has Tampa. 
I mean, it's oppressive there for so much of the year that what I personally find to be really miserable heat and humidity, but the actual marine influence keeps the thermometer from quite making it to that 100 degree mark. And that will likely be the case in Buffalo as well. Um, and so it's not just northern Buffalo, but it's also some uh, locations along the Gulf and the tropical Atlantic, which have that marine influence so often. So in general, um, we're going to continue to be warmer than average. And Friday may be the warmest day of the year so far. Uh, plants are taking off, I think you've noticed, and the growth rates combined with warmer than average soil temperatures really causing some soaring vegetative blooming right now. Pollen count down a little today only because of the showers, but the pollen count will generally be, as you might expect, on the high side from multiple sources. So that's the big picture. And uh, I'll also be keeping you updated on social media, Facebook and Twixter, and uh, here on the podcast. Thanks for listening and please share. By the Oh, one more thing. This podcast, which I record on Spotify, is available, if you type in the name of it, Don Paul's Bits of Bladder, on virtually every podcast platform. So if you have a thing against Spotify for some reason, you can find it on all virtually all the other sites too. Thanks.